Um, hello, so this next video that I'm uploading is um, about medical history and its significance and this is especially important in DTP. I know it's, uh, it's easy to forget what all we need to keep in mind when we're especially discussing the medical history in the DTP. So this video will just cover the um, uh, some of the important points and this and the, f the subsequent videos. This video just has um, two of the medical conditions but in the following videos I'm going to be adding the other conditions as we go on just so that each video doesn't become too long. Now um, when we're asking about any medical condition uh, there's three D's and one C that we need to always remember. What disease the patient has, what drug they're taking for it, what dose they're taking of the drug and whether the disease is controlled or not. Now we're not really going to ask the patient these questions the uh, the questions in these terms but this is just so we can remember the terms um, when we ask about any disease we can ask by we can we can basically ask the patient if they are being seen by the GP at the moment or have they been seen for anything serious in the past um, what they were seen or are being seen for um, and then the patient may or may not tell you any disease because they may forget or they may think that it's not important but that's when why it's important to ask separately about uh, any drugs that they're taking any medication they're taking so ask the patient if they are taking any medication at the moment or have they have they taken any medication in the past uh, any medication that was prescribed by the gp or any medication that the gp didn't prescribe but they're taking on their own um, and this can include um, medications like Gaviscon or medications for heartburn it can include uh, contraceptive pills from for females um, so it may be something that they the patient may not think is important so if you ask about medications separately even if they say they don't suffer from any illness uh, you should be able to find out if they are taking any medications or if they have any illnesses at all then of course if they are taking any medication then the dose of the medication um, now what dose how how much do they take they may have that in written form so if, if they do you can you can always ask them to show you what medications they're taking they've brought it with them since when they've been taking the medication and have there been any recent changes in the dose of the drug uh, dose changes, if there's any recent ones, will show that um, the, basically the patient's condition has worsened, which is why they need a stronger dose of the drug now. So it's just something to keep in mind when it comes to dose. Moving on to controlled or not. Uh, now, um, we're not going to ask the patient, of course, if it's controlled or not, because they may not be knowing what that even means. So. Um, we could just ask, uh, do you think that your diabetes or high blood pressure is under control? If they don't really know what you're talking about, you can ask them. Um, the One of the ways to tell if something's under control or not is to ask if there were any readings related to what condition they have. For example, in diabetes, you can ask about blood sugar levels that are recent. In high blood pressure, you can ask about blood pressure readings. That'll give an idea of whether or not it's under control and ask if it's usually around that reading. For example, if the patient has high blood pressure and their blood pressure is usually, let's say, 100 and 140 by 100, uh, ask if it's usually around this number or is it recently that it's become around this number or just the last reading that was around this number, just to give you a fair idea of what the patient's control of the condition is like. Um, and we're always going to advise that they uh, continue the medications that are given by the GP. Uh, don't stop the medication for any reason. Um, and if there's any kind of, um, if, if for example, the illness that we're talking about is like an attack or anything, then we ask if, if they've had that condition or that condition's worsened basically any dental treatment. So we'll try to link if this has happened in the past during any dental treatment so we can take steps to prevent it in the future. Now coming to starting with A, asthma. 
um, you basically want to ask in any condition you want to ask since when they've been having it what medications they take for it when the last attack was and what triggers the attack now it can be um, the trigger can be anything in asthmatics it could be stress um, so you want to write that down in the notes as well if it's stress and keep that in mind now for any of these rent, uh, any of these conditions where stress is a trigger or could be a trigger we always write down short and stress free appointments to be given to the patient um, other than that any dental attack any uh, asthmatic attack and any dental treatment that's also something we need to ask about because if they have had it in the past there's a chance or if stress triggered it or anything like that there's a chance that they could get it again in the future now the medications that we take for uh, that patients normally usually take for asthma are the inhalers it could be the blue inhaler it could be the brown inhaler the difference is that the blue inhaler is goes by the name of ventolin so they may say I'm taking a Ventolin inhaler or this may say I'm taking a blue inhaler. It's one of the same thing. It's a salbutamol inhaler. And the brown one is the steroid inhaler and that's the beclometasone inhaler. Now the difference between these two is actually quite big. The blue one is more of a um, more of a reliever and the brown one is a preventer. So the blue one just relieves any symptoms that a patient may be having. Whereas brown ones patients usually take, let's say, once once a day or so um, just to prevent asthmatic attacks. These are patients who obviously are more prone to getting asthmatic attacks, so more severe cases of asthma. Um, again, if they're taking the blue inhaler, it's not as big of a problem. But if they're taking the brown, we need to be more careful because these patients are, the brown patients, the ones with the brown inhalers are more prone to developing um, an asthmatic attack. Also, the patient may be now the, they may be taking this in inhaler form or in tablet form. We need to ask about both. And then, if they're using a nebulizer at home, now if they're being nebulized at home or using a nebulizer, that means that they are more likely to develop an asthmatic attack. Now, the significance of this is that. Um, if, for example, stress is a trigger, we need to give short and stress-free appointments and offer IV sedation. We're not going to give the patient general anesthesia because, um, in, in, especially not without a GP consultation because their breathing ability is already suppressed. So in general anesthesia, it may be further suppressed. So IV can be offered safely. Uh, we need to be careful about general anesthesia. Also, we're going to advise them to bring, even if it's brown or blue, bring the inhaler to each appointment, rinse their mouth after they use the brown inhaler especially because if they don't rinse their mouth, it can lead to candidal infections. And we have to make sure we don't give these patients NSAIDs for pain relief because in asthmatic patients, uh, they're not really tolerated, can actually bring about an asthmatic attack. So paracetamol for pain relief in asthmatic patients. Um, that was for asthma. Now coming to allergies. Now allergies can be in the form of allergies to medications. Could be most likely in this exam, it's usually pen penicillin. Um, any substance allergies. Um, sorry, this is latex. And then any food allergies. And any food allergies um, basically um, doesn't really matter what the allergen is some people say that we should ask them what happened when they had the allergic attack uh, what symptoms they experienced if they had a rash if their stomach was upset it doesn't really matter because even if they say that they just had a rash wasn't a big uh, allergic reaction we're still going to avoid that allergen, so there's not really much of a point in asking if what kind of symptoms they developed after the allergic uh, after the allergic reaction. Um, so you have to avoid those allergens at every cost, and also latex. If they say they have a latex allergy, just make sure you tell them that okay, we'll provide you a latex-free environment, and we won't be using any latex gloves. Um, so this is for asthma and allergies 
and I'll continue the rest of the conditions in the subsequent videos. Thank you.